Hello, I'm Aaron, one of the ship's crew here at Jamestown Settlement, and today I'm going to be starting a series on ship's navigation in the 16th and 17th centuries. By the early 17th century, the English had been crossing the Atlantic Ocean for about a hundred years. They had methods and tools that would allow them to know roughly where they were and what route they would need to take to get to their destination. The first colonists to Jamestown found the Chesapeake Bay, the region they were looking to settle in, and subsequent voyages were able to find Jamestown time after time. So obviously, 17th century navigation works well enough to make that possible. Today we're going to start our discussion on 17th century navigation with the topic of piloting. Piloting is a form of navigation normally done near land and involves observing the coast and taking depth readings in the water. Depth soundings are an ancient nautical method that are even written about in the Christian Bible and the Book of Acts. In the 17th century, depth soundings are normally taken with a lead line. A lead line is a hunk of lead, uh, normally weighing about 7 pounds, attached to a uh, a line, usually about 20 fathoms. Now a fathom refers to a, a unit of measure between uh, a man's outstretched palms, and we normally estimate that to be about six feet long. On the line, there are some leather and some cloth markings tied in, and these are spaced two, three, five, seven, 10, and 15 fathoms apart. And by looking at these markings, as the lead falls into the water, you can determine how deep the water is. Now this is going to be very vital information for a sailor. When the first colonists arrived in 1607, they need to figure out how deep the James River is, and one of the colonists, Gabriel Archer, wrote back to the Virginia Company in London that the James River was navigable for shipping of 300 tons of 150 miles. This is going to be crucial information for the colonists as they're setting up their colony. Uh, when they're further out to sea, another tool they could use is the deep sea lead line, which you notice is just a little bit bigger, it usually weighs about 14 pounds. Now the deep sea lead is attached to a longer line, of anywhere from 100 to 200 fathoms long, and it, it would have its markings starting at 20 fathoms and then usually every 10 fathoms after that. Um, these tools are going to be really important for sailors to know when they're nearing land and knowing how they can safely navigate their ships. Let's see one in action. Currently we're on Jamestown Settlements, recreated Susan Constant, and we're out here on the beakhead so we can figure out how deep of water she's sitting in. Susan Constant has a draft of about 11 feet 9 inches, but let's see how deep our basin is right here. So we're going to take our lead line and lower it down into the water. Now, the colonists, the first colonists at Jamestown, picked Jamestown Island as their site because they said there was six fathoms, about 36 feet of water right offshore, and they can board their ship onto the trees. Um, currently, our lead line looks like we're at a, look like a, uh, maybe two and a half fathoms, something like 15 feet of water deep right here. Um, this is where we're at low tide currently, but more than enough for our ship with its 11 foot 9 inch draft. Now the depth of the water is not the only thing you can learn from the lead line. By arming your lead with tallow or some other form of animal fat, you can pick up some of the sediment, some shells, some rocks, whatever you can find at the bottom of the river or the ocean, and that is going to give you some valuable clues for piloting as well. You can know how safe the bottom of the, the river is if you happen to run aground, what danger it presents to your ship, and you can also use those to figure out where exactly you are. Different rivers are going to have different color mud at the bottom. Um, and all of this information will be recorded in a book called A Sailor's Rudder. A rudder is a book that would contain textual sailing directions. Um, it might have things like the uh, compass headings and distances between common ports or harbors. Um, it uh, could contain um, some, some charts that show the, um, the depths of the water. Um, pictures or sketches of what the, the coastline looks like, and anything to aid uh, pilots and navigators um, when, they're, when they're sailing near land. 
they would often also have um, tables in, uh, um, in them as well. This is a table of declination to help with celestial navigation. You might also have tables um, uh, depicting the tides in known harbors and ports. Um, and all of this information, this knowledge, is going to be useful for sailors um, when they um, return to places that they've been before or that it's even something they could um, sail and share, sh uh, share with other sailors as well. Um, the invention of the printing press is going to allow for the um, publication of rudders like these on a more mass scale that will make uh, traveling long distances safer and easier. Thanks for joining us for this video about piloting. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment below. Let us know if you have any questions about 17th century navigation. And if you do, definitely make sure you check back later for our, the next videos in our series.